And while everyone out there would love to have a set of John Cossey cylinder heads, the budget don't always allow for that. Let's just be honest. You need to really check this book out. Uh, you can get it off of Amazon or anywhere else, but I highly suggest it. And as you can see here, a quarter, almost an entire quarter of this valve is being shrouded by this area right here. Looking at what David calls uh, an scavenge plateau right here so that we can get that exhaust charge moving faster. So I'm out and about in Casper today and I wanted to tell you about this quick fuel carburetor. It could be yours. It's a SQ650, has all the bells and whistles, donated by David Vizard himself. How do you win it? You go to merchantsofspeed.net, purchase either this made in USA banner here, uh, top quality piece, will look great in a garage or man cave, or buy a hat, or buy the bundle. If you buy the item separately, that will get you one chance to win the carburetor. If you do the bundle, that's two opportunities. So if you see someone posting in the comments of the video that you won the giveaway, that's a scammer, just so you know. So make sure you go to merchantsofspeed.net. We're going to run this through the end of August 31st, and then David and myself will go live to announce the winner. And don't forget, so subscribe to David's channel as well. So as you can see, we've made some progress with these cylinder heads in the first two videos. I highly suggest before you watch this video, go back and watch the previous two episodes on budget head porting so that you can get a better understanding of where we're at today, okay? And then it will all make sense. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about where this these cylinder heads are actually going. My buddy Jason Black has Rowdy Blue. You've seen him in a previous episode of Unity Motorsports Garage building a big block and it's going to have nitrous on it that's the one thing that i haven't said even though he's trying to run outrun me and casper and mixed up balls i want to do the best job possible on these cylinder heads because that's just the way i am and the one thing about it is we haven't even touched the cylinder ports so the experts will tell you about deshrouding but they don't typically tell you how to go about and do it we're going to show you some mods that won't show up on the flow bench as a positive result, such as a scavenge plateau. You probably never heard that before. So just follow along. I'm going to do this video a little bit different because I've had people saying that they want to see me actually working on the heads in the process. So I'm going to do a voiceover so that you can see it. And we'll see how this video turns out. I really don't know, but let's get started. As you can see, I'm starting off pretty much where I left off in the last video, talking about the cutter that I was using, and I'm actually going back and undercutting this particular area to unshroud the intake even more. This here will allow the valve to actually flow more air as it's opening up off the seat, and we're going to blend it in over towards the spark plug boss. Most people fail to realize just how much of a flow impediment the spark plug boss actually is in the lift curve. As the valve comes up and the column of air begins to move, the plug boss itself becomes a restriction. How we alleviate this is we go through and we grind about one to two threads of spark plug boss off. This makes you have to use spark plug indexing washers to get the right depth of the spark plug. You see that we have this small little quench area on the outside of the chamber. We want to roll this into the chamber. As we have a quench pad on the other side, forcing the air fuel mixture across. If we leave it, the two forces will counteract and reduce the energy that's available for the air coming into the port to actually flow. So we want to roll that edge and allow for the air fuel mixture to go up into the chamber so that the oncoming quench is being forced and it creates a swirl pattern. 
One thing I'd like to emphasize is I'm letting the tool do the work. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the grinder itself. And right now I'm just breaking the edge and then we will start the rolling process into the chamber. Uh, we're going to focus more on the intake side right this second and then we will work our way across to the exhaust side. I'm going to continue this process very slowly, taking my time, and then once we are finished, what I'm going to do is take a sandpaper roll and go in and clean it up, but right now, we're good on the intake side. At this time, I'm going to switch my die grinder over from the carbide cutter to the emery roll, and what we're going to do is smooth out the chatter marks that was left behind by the cutter. This is about a 60 grit roll. We'll go through, take our time. It is a process, but what we're gonna do is to smooth out all the rough surfaces. We're not trying to polish the chamber at this point just yet, but what I am gonna do is focus on that spark plug boss, smooth everything out to where there is no hot spots left behind. As you can see, it's taking shape, looking really good, but this is a time consuming process. Don't get aggravated. Just let the sand and roll do its thing. Make sure that you stay within the scribed line that you have put for your cylinder bore and just roll that edge into it to where it's a constant radius. While I was over there polishing the chamber, David took a three inch sanding disc and cut it down to the diameter of the valve that we're using. This is going to be for a really cool trick. What he does is he takes and cuts fins in the direction of rotation and cuts them out so that we can get into the nooks and crannies around the valve seat and actually polish down that edge that I was telling you about. As you can see when it his finished project, it pretty much looks like a propeller. Pretty cool stuff. So let's see how it works. Going back to my die grinder, I will switch it over to this one inch arbor. Sometimes we will cut the arbors down so that we can get into tighter spots, but make sure that it's on there securely and then we're ready to start. Using this flapper disc will allow you to get into the area that you can't reach with the cartridge roll. This is where the seat protector comes in as you can get down to the very edge where the head meets the seat and we want to have removed that edge. As you can see, this is a semi-finished product right here. There is actually one area down in there that I'm pointing to that I need to go back and dress up because I really couldn't reach it with the cartridge roll or the flapper disc. But as you can see, the edge has been rolled. Most people would call that chamber softening in the nitrous world. But for right now, I'm going to take a half inch flow ball, which represents half inch valve lift, and we're going to see just how shrouded it is at the half inch mark. It clears through where the spark plug area is, and it goes through to the point of the chamber in which you really can't get anymore. This is a good indication that above 500 lift, this head is going to deliver the goods. Another quick tip I'd like to show you using the flapper wheel is it can be used to blend the seat into the throat area of the port. Even though we're going to port this bowl, I just wanted to show this so that you can see that it cleans the valve seat and all you would really need to do at this point is lap the valve in and you would be good to go. Just a little tech tip. At this point, I think it's important to show the photo on the right is actually where we started at with these cylinder heads. But through our porting of the chamber, you can see through this photo that the green areas which were affected by the chamber being shrouded and what we're trying to alleviate. The red areas are the bore. When you look at the column of air and how it flows into the chamber, you get a better understanding of what we're trying to accomplish with this opening of the chamber at these given points. So now that we've got the intake side kind of sorted out, now we're going to move to the exhaust. 
The next move that I'm going to show you is something that you can probably only see in DV's porting school. In fact, I know that to be true because no one else does this that I'm aware of. But what we're going to talk about is exhaust scavenging right here. So what we're going to do is come in here and remove some metal and make a plateau shelf. So what that will do is you don't want the exhaust gas shooting over top of the exhaust valve because like I was saying at the speed in which this is traveling it's real easy it's like skipping a rock over a lake we want when that valve starts to open we want those gases to go in this side and it will actually make the exhaust flow more on a running engine this is something that you really can't see on a flow bench now, only thing that we're going to be able to visualize on this flow bench is this area right here because it's actually shrouded. But this right here will pay huge dividends on a running engine. And then when the intake valve opens, it will help scavenge this cylinder to the best benefit. We want to take a look and use our little flow ball to see how this exhaust valve is shrouded. All right, so the engine doesn't care about flow numbers. It cares about area. So when we check this, we see that this valve is extremely shrouded on this side right here. You also have to remember, as this valve opens up, the flow that's going between the valve and the seat is at a supersonic rate. That air is tra traveling at an extremely fast rate. So, it's not going to be able to choose where it goes. It's going to go where it can. Now, given that this is a big block, this supersonic situation will exist until this valve gets to about 200 thousandths lift, thereabouts, before it goes below subsonic. So just keep that in mind. It's time to start up the die grinder again. And if you notice, I'm starting on the deshrouding process against the chamber wall. The reason why I'm doing this is so that it'll give us an indication of where we need to go with the scavenge plateau. It's like putting a puzzle together. The main thing is take your time, do your deshrouding in small increments, keep checking with the flow ball, and you really can't go wrong. You can see that I'm finally making progress. This is after about checking 10 different times for unshrouding with the ball. You can see that I've scribed a line there at the edge of the chamber and it's good to go. So now I can lay out where this scavenge plateau actually needs to exist. Going up to where I began the unshrouding process, I can then work backwards to get the angle that I'm actually looking for. When you're doing this type of work, I can't stress enough. Take your time, let the tool do the work because the last thing you want to have happen is have the tool jump out of your hand, scratch the deck of the head, then you've got more issues. But keep working the surface backwards and forward until you get where you need to be. Here you can see pretty much the finished product. I've got to go in and finish cleaning up with the cartridge roll. I'm going to go in and remove the chatter marks left by the cutter itself. This is not going to be a final polishing. I'm going to follow this up with using our sanding disc to get into all of the nooks and crannies along with the valve seat edge to remove that sharp ledge that I was telling you about on the intake as well. Then we're going to move from here over to the intake side and pretty much finish this chamber up for good. One thing I want to stress the importance of is not removing too much metal in this particular area of the intake valve. In doing so gives it more area, increases the flow, and creates what is called counter swirl, opposing the swirl that's happening on the other side of the chamber. So what we're going to do is just lay this back back here, taking away very little metal, polish it out to give it a good service, and then this will be pretty much finished up. So here is our chamber. It is pretty much finished up. You noticed we did this in parts. I started out here with the 3 16 ball, moved to the half inch ball. We laid the spark plug boss back because most people don't realize is that boss is a very much an impediment to flow. 
Did I say that right? Probably not. It impedes flow. So with that being said, then we come over here and then we got into the scavenge plateau. There's one area that's left we still have to do, but we're running out of time. David has been doing all of the filming for me. Thank you, David, for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, but I've got to come in here and deshroud this part. And then the chamber will be done. You will might say, this chamber looks unconventional. I've never seen a chamber look like this. There's one thing that I can guarantee that this chamber will deliver unconventional power as well. Just wait till you see this truck run at the track. So that pretty much wraps up another episode on cylinder head porting without a flow bench. Even though we're using big block Ford cylinder heads as our test subject here, the same principle will apply to pretty much anything that you're working on. You just have to use DV's five golden rules of head porting. And honestly, a lot of the things that I've learned personally comes from DV's porting school, which with his health conditions, we've kind of had to put a pause on that for a while, but we've been talking about getting it started again in the future. So we don't have a time frame on that yet. I know there'll be people who ask, well, can you port a set of cylinder heads for me? The answer to that is no. The whole purpose of these videos is to give you the tools and give you the knowledge so that you can do it yourself. Don't be scared. There's nothing from stopping you from experimenting. The main thing is that what we have done here, yes, it will lower the compression slightly, but I promise you there is flow gains to be had. Now on this situation here, with it going into a nitrous motor application, um, we're going to have to run some washers on the spark plug to index the plug out because you do not want the threads of the plug protruding into the chamber because that will create a hot spot and all of the work that we did grinding will be for naught because the spark plug will then become the restriction. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we use cheap Autolite 3924s. They work great, but for a hardcore nitrous motor, NGK is pretty much the only way to go. I think that pretty much wraps this video up. And so until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I will catch you later.